Hello and welcome to another Blender know-how video tutorial. And uh, we're just going to be learning how to create uh, quick fire or quick smoke simulation. So let's go ahead and get started into Blender. Open up a new file and uh, click on the cube and hit X to delete and hit Shift A, add mesh and UV sphere. One on your numpad key to go into the front view and hit tab, hit Z and go into wireframe. Select these bottom half, uh, or I guess a little bit over, a little under half, and uh, click on vertices, or delete your vertices using the X key again. Tab back into object mode, hit S, Z, and scale it down. Back into that. Let's go ahead and click object and click on quick effects, quick smoke. So essentially what this is, is we're making a smoke simulation and the quick smoke is just sets up a lot of the, the basic things for us. Uh, this is called the domain. Smoke has to be calculated within this domain. The bigger it is, the longer it will take to calculate. The smaller it is, the less smoke you can have. So I'm just going to make it a little bit taller because smoke generally rises. And then yeah, that was looking pretty good. I'm just going to now come over to the physics tab and go through, walk through a couple of these uh, things. First off, resolution divisions. I suggest just leaving this at 32 until your final render and then increasing it to, I don't know, 70 to 100. Um, the higher it is, the longer it takes to render or bake it. <clears throat> um, I would highly suggest using adaptive domain. And uh, what essentially what this is, is if we don't have this and we just bake it, the computer has to calculate everything within the domain and every frame. If we do adaptive domain, the computer can detect where smoke would be and make that domain smaller so that it only has to calculate smoke within this. Um, and then we'll talk about cache a little bit later. There's filled weights. You can take any kind of physics related things and add or remove them. And uh, the next one that we're going to talk about is high resolution. Suggest so marking that one. And this will add, let's see if I play if I can get some of these things. Yeah, so right here, some of these little edges here, those are the high resolution. It's the, the fine details of your fire, it's the sparks. Uh, that type of thing. The higher you have this, the longer it will take to render. Um, probably put it at two. I'm going to leave it at one just for, this, for me in the video, just so that I don't get a lot of weird lag. Um, but you can put this up to probably max of five before your computer starts crying. Um, but yeah, I would I would change that to probably at least two to get some good good physics. And this is probably to 75 to 100. Okay, so I'll switch over to this object. This is where our smoke is coming from. And click on flow type. Uh, there's these four options, and they may seem really simple, uh, and they are kind of if you know what they do, but they fire is not just fire, and fire and smoke is mainly smoke, and smoke is, well, that actually is what it is, it's smoke. Outflow is outflow. Um, it would mean it just smoke keeps coming from there. Uh, fire and smoke and fire, these are the two that I feel like are, are weird to me. Um, generally when I would think of this, I would think of fire just being fire and fire and smoke being like the natural world fire and smoke, but this is mainly like a smoldering fire where you have a, you put leaves on it or something and uh, it's more this big billowy cloud of smoke and like a hint of fire. Whereas fire is like the natural world fire with a little bit of smoke at the top. So I'm going to click on that one and we're going to leave all the rest of these things as default. I'm going to click back on the domain and go down to the cache. You can see that it's all grayed out. Um, maybe I should actually explain what the cache is first. So the cache is, we have this smoke here, correct? And uh, with cache, it can save this data of where the smoke is to a file so it can make things faster and it can also allow us to render things like if we didn't use this cache if we hit F12 on our keyboard we actually wouldn't get anything in our render so we have to bake before we can render and uh, it's all grayed out so how do we do it well just hit control S this is to save and uh, go ahead and save your file and then click uh, actually don't click bake all yet. Uh, I would suggest just putting this at 70. 
Uh, this is a good habit to get into if you do a lot of these kind of physics simulations. Uh, put a low frame number so that it only has to calculate 70 frames instead of 250 and then see if it's going to work. Um, so your computer doesn't have to sit there and render or bake things all day long. Uh, see the problem with not having it baked is you can't just click on any frame down here, right? Well if we bake it, now I'm going to click bake, it goes pretty quick if I don't have all those options at an insane amount. Um, but now we have fire and we can click anywhere. It's it's just it's referencing the the file that it created, the cache file. So I'm going to go over here and go into cycles. Uh, it does work with e with EV, but I'm just going to leave it here uh, with cycles just to to be basic with the quick smoke sim. And then I'm going to hit <clears throat> F12 to see what this looks like. And you can already tell. I should have. Actually, I will. I'm going to decrease this to 50 and F12 again. And you can see how there really isn't smoke, or there's no fire. There is only smoke. And that's just because we have not yet set up the sim, or the material for this fire. So I'm going to exit out of that. We don't need to finish rendering it because we know it's not going to work anyway. And I'm going to split this in half. Uh, in Blender 2.8, just grab the corner and click on Shader Editor, or in Blender previous Blender versions, it's called the Node Editor. And uh, let's look at our principled volume. There's some options here. The main ones you're going to want to know is color, color attribute, animation strength, and animation color. Some of these other things uh, you can tweak and play with, but uh, well, density is actually pretty common to tweak. This is how dense the smoke will be, but we could easily just type in flame here and it would work. We would get some flame and we can change the color of it. But if we really want to tweak this and play with this, we can't really do that. What we need is an attribute node and drag the color over here to color and type in flame. Uh, so it's the same thing we would typed in over there, but uh, it gives us more control because now we can throw in other nodes in between this. Before we could only tweak that. Um, I'm just going to turn on this and turn down this so that it doesn't kill my computer. Sweet. So now I am just going to zoom in here. We don't have very good fire right now. Uh, if we plug this in, if I take this out, it's all gray. If we plug this back in, the flame attribute tells Blender where the flame will be, which is this lighter part of the smoke. So let's just type in Shift A and click on a color ramp. So now we can put in a gradient of where the fire is going to be. So if we click on this first side, we can change this to be like a red. And if we can change this right side to be a black to transition into, not blue, to transition into the smoke, but it's backwards. And this is just because I think this should honestly be the bottom of the fire and this should be the top. Uh, obviously, the creators of Blender would beg to differ. Uh, there's an easy way to fix that, though. We can just type in invert so we can invert the, f the flame. And boom, it's right there, and we're done now with that. But you, you can see it still doesn't look like fire. It just looks like red smoke. Uh, well, let's plug in the color into the emission color. Nothing changes because we don't have a strength. We could turn the strength up but we can see that there's like all of this. So let's just uh, let's plug the factor of the attribute into the emission strength. And now what that's going to do is going to tell it where to be emission or where to have emission. Uh, one last thing, so this is pretty much the gist of my tutorial but let's add one more thing and it's called the math node and we're going to plug it into this bottom one that goes into the emission strength and you can see it's starting to do the same thing again well let's just change it to multiply and it'll take whatever the factor of this is and it'll multiply it by a value so you can make this brighter or you can make it uh, well what just happened there uh, make it darker uh, based on whatever you would like it to do. So I'm going to leave it at 5 and then I'm just going to finish this video with a render. Um, so like, subscribe, do all that fun jazz and hope to see you again on
Blender know-how. Hope that you've learned something in this video, and we'll see you next time. Bye.